Are you a professional pillow fighter or a nine to five low cost time travel agent? Or maybe real estate sales on Mars is your profession. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is you do, however complex or intricate, Monday.com can help you organize, orchestrate, and make it more efficient. Monday.com is the one centralized platform for everything work-related. And with Monday.com, work is just easier. Monday.com, for whatever you run. Go to Monday.com to learn more. Well, I don't see the point in waiting any longer. So let's bring her out. The star attraction, the one you came to see. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only... Ms. Judy Gold. Welcome to Kill Me Now. I am Judy Gold here with Lauren Hennessy, who is my kind of co-host, but doesn't tell me what time it is during the podcast, um, just sends me little notes instead of just getting up to greet the next guest. Anyway, so that's Lauren, and I am, all right, learning on the job, everybody! <laughs> It's the only way it All right, I am thrilled, excited. Me too, uh, Lauren. I you, have the biggest crush on I, I Ophir. Know. Okay. Lauren, you I'm gotta sorry. let me lead, right. and then and stop. Okay, <laughs> I can't. It's getting on my nerves. Okay, okay so yeah. like sorry I'll go on. I'll be in my head, ready to talk, and then I fucking interruption. <laughs> I can see how exactly this is going. Okay, go. we're here with Ophira Eisenberg now. Why is there... Honestly, there is kind of feedback. I hear a guy. Oh, oh yeah. Someone, someone outside? I'll go I'll go kick his ass. Do you hear that? I did hear it, yeah. Okay, yeah. Get them the fuck out of the hallway. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Ophira Eisenberg is... Okay, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Just keep going, I got it. Is an incredible writer, comedian... I hate that thing. Oh, don't you hate God. it? I don't even know I, why I said that. I don't even know why I said that. I fucking kill me now. That is kill me now. Yeah, comedian. I just said comedian. No, that's like she's your pet a peeve. comedian. Ugh. She's a, an actor. She's a writer. She's uh, NPR host. Uh, game problem solver. Uh, Brilliant Jew. 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 <laughs> ding ding. And I. I'm Ophira Eisenberg. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you for being on Kill Me Now. Now, we're going to start today yes. with your Kill Me Now moment, which was that we were in here recording. And um, now, I'm not good with time anyway, and I get very into my guests. Sure. And you apparently waited in the um, waiting area for a, quite a long time. It was a little long. Yeah. And I always think that Lauren, when the next guest is here, should get up and greet the guest. And that's a hint to the person. But that didn't happen. No, instead I passed her a note that said Ophira is here. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But that was not at 11 o'clock. <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't at 11 o'clock. Were you here at 11 o'clock? I was here at 1110. Okay. Well, I passed it when at 1110. Anyway, so Lauren's fired, okay. and we're done. Damn. Good. Again. God damn it. Um, final met, episode. I'm very happy to be on your <laughs> final episode. Just my and final it's episode. A very, <laughs> it's a very special version of Kill Me Now. Now, Lauren, you know about Lauren, right? I you know, know all Lauren, about Lauren. Because oh. Lauren, uh, all I get is, I'm so attracted. I'm so attracted to her. I'm in love with her. So I said, please sweet. do not act like a dork. When Ophira gets here. Oh, I, I never said I'm so attracted to her. I'm in love with her. I said Hemna and I have the biggest crush. All right. That's how I interpreted it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Ophira. Yes. But you are very attractive. And if okay. I wasn't oh, married and this totally is in love what with Hemna, I would be so attracted to yeah, you. Yeah, that's thank great. You, Lord. Lauren, we're going to let Judy lead today? Yes, boss. Okay. Thank you. No Adderall today on Lauren. Um... Ophira, I love you. I, oh, it, it, the feeling is, I no. feel like this power dynamic's wrong. It's supposed to be the other way. I love you. No, I love I you. I look up to you. Well, everyone, you <laughs> know, but I'm shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm very thrilled that you're pregnant. Uh, yeah, I just, as I was waiting in the waiting room for 45 minutes, not you to put got, a time you, limit on it, uh, but I had a um, 
beet juice that I bought across the street for nine ninety five because that's a reasonable price. Yeah, I know that place. Yeah, yeah. the beet. Uh, they were like nine ninety five, and I was like, "Can we? Here's five bucks. You want to call it a day? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, are you really? are you pressing the beet? Now but then, beat as it. I drank it, it said, uh, "By the way, this is unpasteurized. Just uh, letting you know. Don't drink this." warning oh. on it and then i was like oh should i google that and then i googled which obviously is the best way to deal with any health oh my issue. god that's what i do google yep forget it the american medical association uh, and of course if you're pregnant all you get to is forums filled with people right. not actual information no. forums uh i've never posted yeah. on a forum or posted on yelp or TripAdvisor. Right. you know why because i'm not one of those people right i'm not one of those idiots then i have to read the other idiots talk to each other about and it's my all, problem but it's also they they <laughs> they they post things and it's like Obviously, you had a bad fucking day and you hate black people and your waiter was black. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, or you had a gay waiter, you hate your gay wa- You know, and it's like, shut the fuck up. Shut up. Shut your fucking mouth. Unless you are a trained, even them. It's like, and critics. Oh, yeah. It's so subjective. Shut the fuck up. It is such a specific FU. A very specific mentality. So, by the way, never Google, uh, if you're pregnant, anything Anything. to do with the word stairs. Unless you want a lot of stories of people that have fallen downstairs. That was in Downton Abbey. (laughs) Downton Abbey. Wasn't that an old school way of... uh, Yep. It yeah. was an old yes. school way of uh, fixing yes. a problem. Yeah, Planned Parenthood uh, stairwell. Yeah, stairwell. But uh, they have yeah. a huge Pl- stairwell at Planned Parenthood. <laughs> Planned. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> wait, wait. I it's got like one. four stories high. <laughs> Planned stair. And this is what they do. You get to the top of the stairs and you start walking down the stairs, and then someone yells, "Oh, Fira!" and then you fall. <laughs> Do That's how they in, do it. They're like, how how invasive do you want this to be? <laughs> and you get to choose, I don't and know. you get it's to like, choose if you have carpeted stairs, <laughs> yeah, exactly, or if a railing, wooden, no railing, railing. Yeah. Yeah. no railing, windy. Do you yes, want windy? You can get spiral. <laughs> yeah. uh, I still like Planned Parenthood, and if you didn't hear um, my joke, there it is. <laughs> okay, thank you. Born in Calgary. Yeah, unfortunately. I know. What the fuck? It's so freezing there. It's and freezing. And the Olympics were there. The Olympics the, were there. I, I, Little known piece of trivia. I danced in the opening ceremony. No! Of the 1998. No, there was an 88. There we go. No way. Winter Olympics. Yeah. I mean, one of... Uh, where Was your mother like, Elfira oh, is dancing in the, uh, in the Olympics. You get to see her on television. Yeah. I wish she was that person as the youngest of six. From yes, a you long, are the six. You are, yes. From what a, is what, yeah. No Jews have six kids. Yeah, I know. These people are old school. I mean, they're not they're religious. Jewy Jew or no? They they met during the uh, fall of World War II. Yes. This is what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my, now, how old are they? Uh, my mother just turned 86. Mm-hmm. My father has passed away quite a few years now. Uh, but yeah, she was in Holland. He was in Israel. Of, he was in Israel, but it yeah, wasn't even Israel. Israel. It was Palestine. <laughs> Israel. It was not Israel. You yes. know, my, my name's not Ophira. It's Ophira. <laughs> Ophira. Ophira. <laughs> exactly. Um, so oh, what the music in that. And, you know, my brother-in-law is Israeli. <laughs> And he's so annoying, but uh, you know that. Uh, but your father seems like um, you know. Uh, he's a uh, tough guy. This is a lot of yeah. rally. Uh, 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 you know, you know, you know, yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. How many? What? What's the ratio, girl boy? Three girls, three boys. Oh Whoa. my God! It's yeah. like the Brady Bunch and <laughs> Berg, the, the Brady, the Brady, Brady Berg. the Brady Steinberg bunch. Uh, and these people are. Uh, ask her how many gays? No gays no that gays. I know of. That's fucking shitty. I mean, I I was on the cusp for a long time. Really? I made, I made the choice I'm in now. Nice. Yeah. Really? So yeah. We've got a bi. We've got a queer in the family. Yeah. I used to look at it like uh, people were like, oh, you like everyone. I was like, no, I don't like anyone. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like you if hate I find everyone equally. someone I like, who cares what they are? Yeah. Right. Yeah. John is lucky that none of us met before him That's in right. this room. Now, Jonathan Jew? Jew. Because do you think he could marry a non-Jew? Uh, as a New York Jew, he tried. No, could you? <laughs> oh, could I? Yes. Really? Sure. Did any of your siblings marry non-Jews? They did. Uh-oh, what happened? Yeah. I, was your father alive? Oh, yeah. It was uh-huh. not good. No? Was <laughs> he? What happened? Well, I wasn't even alive yet, but my eldest brother 
because he was born like he was a hippie in the 60s right. went to some hippie jamboree in oh. the United States <laughs> and got some Catholic girl knocked up no <laughs> way and they got married and my what? parents said get an abortion and her parents said uh-huh. they're getting married so, so they, wait how long were they married uh, they got divorced a few years ago so that's a long time oh yeah were they in love? Were they in love? Were they in love? Uh, I think at some points. And how many kids did they have? They had two kids. And uh, no Judaism in the kids? In the Catholic? Or they, the... They're, you know, the, that's a kind of, you know, Canada, if you don't, if you live on the West, maybe like a lot of the West, uh-huh. unless you're in L.A., you can sort of be something that enjoys a Hanukkah dinner here and there. Oh, so that is uh, <laughs> there. Anyone else married the non-Jews? Uh, my next, uh, my brother, one up for me, married a born-again Christian. Oh, that is terrible. <laughs> and what happened with that? <laughs> yeah, so they're good. fine. And they're, they're raising Wait, those uh, kids. Um, born again? Something. They're not born again. She's the black sheep of her family a little bit. Mm-hmm. So she's, but they, there's still some Christianity rolling around there. That they, is unbelievable. They have some veggie tails. And then the, uh-huh, rest, the rest of the uh, kids. No, my other sister married an atheist. Good. Okay, that's better than the fucking born again Christian. <laughs> okay. The other sister's divorced, so. Uh, Did she not read you? Nope. Oh my God! So you're the favorite, uh, and your father doesn't live to see this. And, and what other brother? Yeah, uh, but th- this is your father. I cannot see this. It is so true. I was like, nobody cares. And then Jonathan and I got married. We did not have a wedding, but we had a little party. Right. And then every Jew from Calgary oh, came God. out of the woodwork, oh, and they God. were like, Mazel Tov. Yeah, that they is live. amazing. They yeah. live for weddings. Now you oh, are yeah. pregnant. I am pregnant, and you're going to have a baby. Yeah, I'm real old. Do? I'm How real old, old to do this. I'm like, uh, I'm early 40s. Oh, my mother was 41 when she had me. Yeah. My yeah, sister yeah. was 42 yeah. when she had her kids. Yeah. Uh, I love it when, I mean, You're it's a compliment, but after a show, because of course you have to talk about it on stage at a certain point because people are just freaking out, looking right. at you, going like, oh my God, is this okay? Huh. Um, but someone came up to me and they were like, I know you said you're old, but I just want to let you know my, my sister just had a kid and she's 35. I was like, oh, oh that's great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. That makes me feel, you know, uh, I went on stage you look up younger until, than 35. I'm talking. <laughs> Sorry, boss. Um, I went on stage uh when I was nine months pregnant. I mean, I went on stage till the very end. Good. And God. I used to I used to get on stage and um, be like, oh, my God, I feel so bloated and retaining. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I would be like, um, I would fake I was going into labor after if a joke bombed or something. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> and I'd be like, that's. Oh. And then sometimes I would pour water so it looked like no. my water broke and then have a little baby doll come out. And be, ah. uh, or I did like, go. Oh, I'm going to the prom. Um, and <laughs> I, I mean, I did every bit. And you know what? Why should I was? Why not? Hello? Yeah. No, I, I did th- the vagina monologues. I was the angry vagina. <gasps> When I was pregnant. That is the best mixture of a, a character choice. I know. And a monologue. They made me do the, that one. And they told me I was the angriest vagina they had ever had. Really? I uh-huh. But I have to tell you that the baby, after I did that monologue, would wake up and like kick and like, because, you know, I'm like angry. Right, right. You were like involved oh. in the emotions of it. I, I OK, go. I was just going to say, I've only had one person touch me. And it was recently at a comedy club and a man that was a friend of a comic no. didn't touch me. He went towards it and then kissed my stomach three times like a no. and then said some fucking and then said it's a boy because I, I don't know what it is. Right. And, and then I just said, uh, I'm not pregnant. I love that. Yep. Yep. I was just like, <laughs> and good. Did, was oh, he freaked he out? He freaked out, uh, and then I felt like he got disgusted in himself because he was like, "What was I kissing?" Like then, right? There was a lot of emotions. Wait, did good. you tell him you were pregnant, or uh, someone I, else did? I gave it. A, I gave it a good while. That's... I gave it a pregnant pause, is what I. Hey, hey, Um, and then I told him, and he was very relieved. But I was like, "That's what you get." Yeah, and that's the reaction are... you should have if you kiss someone's stomach. No, yeah, they touch you. First of all, the mm. only people that get up for you are fucking women. 
Uh, you know? Yeah. And it's like, fuck you. You never carried a kid. You have no fucking... It's just awful. But oh. men are afraid of making the mistake of offering a pregnant woman a seat because what if uh, they're that's not pregnant? Nope. bullshit. No. Nope. Fucking bullshit. I agree. Listen. All right. Then you. Then men, if you're listening to this, This is what happens. Know. When someone offers me a seat, I basically look at every other guy around them and I want to go, you should be ashamed of yourself. Right. <laughs> that's what I want to do. I do. I say what shit guys? like, get up. What, yeah. what are you doing? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm horrible. Yeah, I, 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 um, I'm wanting to resort to that. I have. I love you for many reasons. Now, your moth story oh. is... So I did a moth story, but it was not nearly... Uh, I mean, that story... You both have... And been. I have a friend, Beth Greenfield. Do you know Beth Greenfield? Yes. And do you know her story? I don't know her story. What you know story? Beth Greenfield? I've met her. She... Wrote a book, 10 Minutes from Home. Yeah. Do you know that? I do know this. Now it's all, I, yes. Similar? Mm-hmm. Very similar. Right. To her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's hard so, to yeah, talk about a car accident on stage. Or, well, it was, I wouldn't want to repeat it, but I'm glad I did that story. I'm so glad yeah, you did that story. And the one thing about the story of being in this horrible car accident is that in my entire life, I have never, ever wanted to have anything to do with a fucking Barbie dream house. Welcome to Play It, a new podcast network featuring radio and TV personalities talking business, sports, tech, entertainment, and more. Play it at play.it. You're such a girl. Like, oh, yeah. I wanted cars, and I wanted, like, the, the you know, the whatchamacallits. You know, the tracks. Oh, the loop de loop yeah, race cars. I wanted all Those that. Cool. Yeah. I want, that's what I wanted. I wanted that. Um, you know, Girls. I wanted to mow the lawn. Yeah. Did uh, you, you have older brothers? I had one older brother, yeah. one older sister who barely spoke to me, but, um, and completely different from me. Right. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I just was like, you so do not seem like the Barbie Dreamhouse girl. Yeah, I, I wonder, you know, because my brother was such a boy with the racetracks and everything, mm-hmm. and I don't know how, if that's part of it, uh, but I did love the, I love the Barbie, and I love the Barbie Dreamhouse. I never liked dolls. Like Yeah, I don't like dolls. Baby dolls no. and dolls, and I hated them, but I really liked Barbie, and I think it was because I uh, was obsessed with being an adult. Right. Uh, and, you know, Barbie was an adult. And Barbie was an adult. Mm-hmm. And I would like, it was my fantasy, well, like, living up. And to little... be a blonde. Well, Wait, was Barbie was Jewish? That. Barbie was, um, Barbara. In... Yeah. <laughs> Barbara Kleinstadt. <laughs> from Barbara Kleinstadt from Long Island. That's Barbie. <laughs> That's Barbie. Now, um, and, and you're such a feminist. And yet Barbie is the most fucking anti-feminist. Oh, the worst. The worst. Uh, yeah. No one. I was obsessed with the blonde hair. Uh, but, you know, then I, I will say that as I got, uh, my brother got older, I inherited all of his G.I. Joe stuff. Oh, And yeah. I incorporated it. So my Barbie so was Barbie a little So Barbie was different. a slot. No, Barbie, uh, what, I put her uh, Barbie house. Barbie hung with the guys. Right. I put her house on a table and assumed it was on a swamp, so she had a swamp retriever instead of a car. Oh, all right. Her pet was a stingray. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. You win. <laughs> so, um, it got a little weird. Now, uh, You're well-rounded. She had no boyfriend. It was like, you want Ken? No. I love that. I, no. I just fucking... Um, I had... Uh, we usually open with a kill me now moment. Yes. And the kill me now moment was that you fucking had to wait for us. And I'm so, I want to tell you, I owe you 45 minutes of your life but that you can never get back. I, I, that's okay. We'll, we'll figure it out. Can I do something yeah, for we'll you do some... for 45? I'll babysit. <laughs> I will babysit. <laughs> Only for 45 minutes. Oh my minutes. God. This is the best. I will. I'll babysit okay. for an hour. I'll give you an extra. No, I'm such <laughs> no, a good baby. Fine. I love to, I love being, do you love being pregnant? Uh, it's, it's okay. I sometimes, I gotta say, I sometimes forget about it. Right. Now, how far along are you? I'm 28 weeks. 28? Yeah. Mm. I'm getting there. What's the do? November 1st. I am nov- I was born November 15th. They're going to... Oh, my God. You're going to have a Scorpio. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are you? <laughs> I'm a Capricorn. Now, were you a mistake in yes, your family? Yes, I was, I was such a mistake. 
Uh huh. Uh, like my mother cried when she was pregnant with me. Uh-huh. Uh huh. She found out really late for some reason. She because she didn't believe it. They went to Disney. I know because they never had sex. They never had sex. Right. Wait. So your next sibling up is how much older than you? Four years. Four and a half years. And then the oldest is twenty. Yeah. They're, we're all four a four years apart. So what the fuck a, is that? It's a huge. She's slip. like the Jewish Duggar, but not every. <laughs> That's right. She's Duggerstein. I don't know. I don't know what Duggerstein. they did in between. Yeah. But it's like literally. They had sex every four years. That's amazing. And was it? Are they? Are do you all have birthdays around the same time? No, they're all over the usually, place. Yeah, you know, maybe it's just an egg. I know, know, like it, me, like clearly, you know, uh, like I, you know, July fifteenth, honey. <laughs> right. Let's go. It's your birthday now. The um the uh, and I'm not going to go back a lot to the car accident. Even though, sure. do you find that you know we should explain that uh, Ophira survived a very bad car accident? Yes, when I was eight years old. Eight years old and lost your best friend. I lost my best friend and had a lot of injuries. Um, and now, I, yeah, yes. now that my stomach is getting big too, I have a huge scar in my stomach, and yeah, that's uh, looking weird. But it's so you, I bet it looks you're, cool. I'm going to tell you that when you get to the age you were, yeah, uh, when your child oh. is that age. It, that is going to be a very major my Oh, my God. Moment. I didn't even think about that. Uh, gotta, this is what she does. Um, I got to get some therapy ready for that. No, but uh, it is. You should. Because that's <laughs> it's unbelievable what having a child brings back to you of, of that oh. age. And you realize, oh, my God. You know. All right. So I'm just warning you. That's good. No, so that's eight years to prepare. OK. Thank you. So <laughs> ten eight, minutes. No. Eight years, two months. So you... You know, do you feel that? I mean, is anyone else in your family funny like you? Uh, they're they're all characters, but they have different strengths <laughs> when it comes Which to me, the now, hilariousness. I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna translate that from Hebrew to <laughs> yes, <thank laughs> from Hebrew. Uh, I they think they're funny, and they're not. I'm the funniest. <laughs> Sometimes they make me chuckle. Okay, so... I, I also think it's like, oh, was that deep-seated anger yeah. that <laughs> is just coming at me in a nice, sarcastic, funny remark? Do you feel that accident defined you as a human being? Uh, uh, yes. I feel like uh, it did for most of my life. Uh, and then, luckily enough, uh, I had other horrible things happen. So oh, they, that's great. They happened to uh, supersede that. Now, do you feel like during your whole lifetime in Calgary growing up, you were like, that's the girl, that's the girl? Yeah, I, th- I, felt, I felt marked. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say I felt marked, and I think for a while there was a lot of people who saw me. I felt di- I was different. I was different to begin with because I was the only Jew in my class. Mm-hmm. Calgary was very blonde. I know. How the fuck did they get to Calgary? Yeah, I know. They heard, because my dad opened the Hebrew school there because there was like this land of I opportunity. I had to open the Hebrew school in Calgary, and how many? And they bring the Jews to Calgary. Yep, because the Jews love the cold, as you they have love seen the- in Florida and Arizona. <laughs> the first. Yeah. Uh, but then he left. He retired the year I was born. So I went to public school. So I, me and one other woman, well, she was a right. girl then, uh, <laughs> Julie Smolensky, were the two Jews. In- they couldn't let you in the other school, even though your father retired? No, he didn't want me to go. Why? Because uh, that's a good question. I feel like he was always mad at someone. So someone that's must have so done un-Jewish. something. <laughs> Whoa. That goddamn, that bastard. You're not going there. bastard. You're not going there. You go to public school with the non That's right. Wow. They'll so, see. So, um, all right. So you felt marked. I did feel marked. And then, of course, I had I had scars. And so then when I became an adolescent or and sexually active, I was just like, oh, how's this going to play out? Right. Uh, yeah. Like, did, 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 did guys even give a fuck? They didn't really. You know, I found out that's not. You never have to worry about the person who is weirded out by a scar. You have to worry about the person who is really, really into a scar. Ah. That's the problem. Uh Oh, because Henry, my son, yeah. who's going to be 19. His oh girlfriend, God. I know, he got his driver's, I can't. Yeah. Um, his girlfriend had major back surgery and has had all these really bad problems. And he's like, mommy, look at the scar. Can you believe that scar? So now I'm worried. What does that mean? No. He's a boy. It means he's a boy and scars are cool. Yeah, it sounds normal. I just mean like, you know, I've had, I had a guy that was like, I want to write poetry on your scar. No. And that's weird. And that is in Hebrew? In Hebrew? <laughs> <laughs> it was in Hebrew. Um, <laughs> 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 
Um, yeah, none of the Israelis care about. It. They're like, yeah, you have a scar. I have scars all over. Yeah, yeah. Lisa, it's life. Um, life is scars. Uh, uh, You're so marked. You. We what are. did you study in college? Oh, cultural anthropology. Oh my God, I knew it. <laughs> She's studying cultural anthropology. What is that going to lead to? At uh, where'd you go? Aww. McGill University. Oh, McGill. My my nephew went there for a year. It was too cold. He went back uh, to Arizona. Yeah, um, Harvard McGill's of the a North. Great school. Scottish. That's yeah. what we say. Harvard of the North. Yeah. And then someone pointed. I think out to you're me. not the only one who says that. Well, yeah. all, all people from McGill. Oh. Harvard never says right. McGill of the South. <laughs> right. So you went to McGill. Um, there were lots of Jews, and you yeah. studied cultural anthropology, which is actually a great. Major for a comedian. It is, yes. right? It was very trendy during that time. I didn't know that. Right. But that was a trendy thing. Now it's it's almost gone. You know what? My therapist often tells me to think like an anthropologist. Really? Yes. Like remove yourself a little right. bit? And-, and see what the situation is oh. going on there. You think of uh, the uh, anthropo- That was my CBT therapist. My cognitive <laughs> behavioral. Right. My other one yeah. is, you know... I'm like, I think there was a sign that there's no signs, Judy. There are no Is signs. That, I, that's the therapist I need. Yes, she's amazing. That's the one I need. Um, so, is that the one I share with you? No, no. that's the, oh, my psycho- psychopharmacologist. She's dry as shit. And she's I love great. It. I had so, to tell my therapist to stop ending every single session with just nodding her head with a sad look, going, it's just, it's very sad. <laughs> I'm serious. That is fucking <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, and I was like, could you not end that way? She was just like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't help that's myself. How, it's very sad. Yeah. <laughs> Mine does though. this thing. She kind of <laughs> leans over and uh, looks and like has a, you know, <laughs> well, <laughs> and then like picks up her <laughs> scheduling book. Oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then says, we're going to have to stop. Uh, really? Is that why you're reaching for your fucking scheduling book? Um, yeah. She reaches for the... Uh, and I. this is what... I swear to God, I'd say 75% of the time, she's like, um, we're going to have to stop. And I go, fuck! Swear to God. Uh-huh. That's funny. Yeah. That's what I say. Are you, I'm like, you're fucking serious? Mine gives good endings. Really good endings. Did, we didn't. There's a voice coming. Sorry about that. The studio. <laughs> I'll go check on it. I know um, the happy voice. I'm like, I'm glad you met someone that works for you. Now I grew up in a house. My father was in World War II. Uh, oh, he. It was in Blitzkrieg, um, and he was in his. My father's born in 1916. Yeah. And my mother 1922. So you have a similar. It's very similar. My mother was born in 1919, and my father would have been born yeah, like in 1913. Uh, that's. I think that's right. Okay. Yeah. Now. Um, your mother was born nineteen nineteen. No, that's wrong. That's that's crazy, right? Yeah, twenty nine. She, she was born in twenty nine. Twenty nine. Sorry. Okay. So then my dad would have been twenty. There you go. Okay. And uh, all my grandparents, as probably yours, were born in the eighteen hundreds. Crazy. I and mean, I say that on stage, and people are like, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm fucking serious. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and um, <laughs> right. I say, and they're like, and I feel like I have a whole different perspective on life. Because my grandmother, who lived till I was 25, was born in 1896, mm. and that's what I listened to. Those stories, um, you know, she was she was a teacher. She actually went to college, and um, mm. you know, and she. My grandfather was an architect and an engineer. I mean, they were very. You know, I'm from a good stock. I'm yeah, this so smart, I, accomplished, and, right? People. And but I, you know, she was fucking. She was 20. Two years old when women could vote. Yeah. I mean, uh, 24, 24 years old before. Women. So I know, you know, for, and, and also she used to be, Judith, your penmanship, you need to have good, and you need to read the women. Oh, I, you oh. know, she used to tell me I had to read these certain, I mean, it was just a whole other. The women, really? Yeah. yeah I have, little women, little women, oh, not the oh. women. I um, have that too because, well, my mother is very old fashioned because she came right. from this old fashioned stock, but she was so obsessed with me. Uh, not getting married and not having kids because she wanted a career so badly, but that wasn't even in her right, scope right, right, right. of understanding till way, way, way when later. When I did game. my show, 25 Questions for a Jewish Mother, which is actually yes. going to Toronto. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And it's selling well. They just did a show. Of it's course. in October. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> when I asked my mother what she would have done if she hadn't had children, she actually said, what you do. And I thought... And she's so funny. Well, she's gone. She passed away six weeks ago. But um, 
she was so sorry. Thank you. So fucking hilarious. And then I thought, I can, there's no way because she would be in an audition. Read. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> I worked my ass off learning this. Yes. I travel right. all the way. And the, well, how old are you? What are you, 20? <laughs> what do you know? What the fuck? Do, yeah, she wouldn't curse She'd like that. She'd probably be What the hell do you know? Extremely and I, famous. Um, but she, oh. I mean, when I, at Shiva, Joy Behar came to Shiva. I wish you would come to Shiva. <laughs> um, there was one day where it was just a performer. It was amazing. Oh and Joy Behar walks in and says, you lost 25 minutes of material. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but it's all, and it's the greatest. And that is like the biggest celebration of life. All right. Right there. So I, I do remember an old Jewish woman that appeared like a mystic came to my father's funeral. I was huh. only a teenager and said, let me tell you something. This is like the, my idea of a Jewish proverb. Let me tell you something. Heaven might be up there, but hell is right here. <laughs> I was like, Thanks. I Thanks. But we don't Thanks. believe in the heaven. That That's feels. right. Yeah, yeah. I don't. we just believe you. Dro- My mother used to say, "You dro- your battery dies, you drop dead, that's the end. Yeah, that's like my, that. my mother yeah. says kind of the same thing. She yeah. goes, what are you talking about what happens afterwards? You're dead, you're dead. You should be lucky, you're dead. <laughs> you're lucky, you're dead. Oh, God, dead. I want to meet your mother. <laughs> um, so you're pregnant, you're married. Pregnant and married. What, uh, wow, what a cliche. And your husband's living in Brooklyn. A oh musician. <laughs> Where? No, he's a, uh, he's, he produces promos at uh, USA Network. He works behind the scenes. Oh, he's Lauren. not a musician? No. At no, all? Lauren uh, sent Come me this. told me John, Jonathan was a musician. Maybe I know your, Jonathan, I know, no, no, no. your co-host, no, is your a musician. Co-host. I know that too. Right. But... This was misinformation given to me by Hamda. Thank you, Okay, Hamda. You There's need... a lot of Jonathans. So how did you meet Jonathan? Uh, we were actually set up by friends. Oh, um, see, this is these are stories that you'll never hear now. That's right. You'll never nope. hear. I've only met him. It'll be, um, you know, he, he, he uh, did a check mark. And then I wrote back, you know, it's just, yeah, I we, love we, that story. We both like Italian cooking. No. Uh, yeah, he came to a show. Actually, he came to see me to show, a little, like, when I moved to New York and I was doing little right. bar shows and basements, trying to make it happen. He was at that show randomly with some friends because we had mutual friends. And then after that, one of them said, you should date Ophira. And he said, no. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. he was like, I will not date a performer. Mm-hmm. Oh, I understand that. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, and then it uh, turns out, you know, you. not a lot of other shit was going on for him. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Pick and Choosy Picky. <laughs> That's right, you picky eater. So, he is a picky eater. One of the things I hate. See? That, yeah. I hate. I fucking hate that. I want to eat. I want to fucking eat a lot. And I want to fucking enjoy it. And that is another thing of having parents that are older. They would be like, you don't like food food then that's fine you don't eat food mm. well my parents mm. i w- this is how dinner was i'm not kidding we always ate at six o'clock every night yep we all sat around the table i had to sit at the head of the table i'm like i'm sitting at the head of the of table course. then my mother to my left my father to my right my sister next to my mother my brother next to my father and um we would ha- i would just he had three more grains of rice than me. I was just like a <laughs> fucking baby. And then um, something would happen, like I'd spill the salt or a glass would, you know, because I was so big and clumsy. And then my mother would be like, that's it. I can't take it anymore. And she'd go upstairs crying. And then my brother's just like, Judith, you ruined dinner again. Judith, go apologize. I'm like, what did I do? What the fuck did I do? No one talks. Right. Right. And it's like, we have to have dinner together. And I, th- at least I fucking drop something and, you know, there's some, like, energy in here. And then I would have to go <laughs> upstairs. My mother would be laying. She always had her elbow over her eyes. And I'd have oh. to go upstairs. I'm really sorry. <laughs> All right, Judith. <laughs> and then she'd come down after everyone was done and have her martyr plate. That's what I called it. And she'd sit there in the dock eating the dock. And, and I felt so guilty. <laughs> oh, God. She loved every fault. minute of it. Shame. Welcome to Play It, a new podcast network featuring radio and TV personalities talking business, sports, tech, entertainment, and more. Play it at play.it. But I remember when my father died. My father died uh, in 1990. And I remember my mother still lived in the house. And where he sat at the table 
the back of the chair made sort of a little mark on the wall. Yeah. And I was like, Ma, what's this? And she, it was like that mark on the wall meant so much to her. That was the uh, yeah, tombstone was never, almost. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Uh, by the way, something you said that really related to me. I think the um, subtext in my family is at all times, what did I do wrong? <laughs> because basically everyone's angry at each other, right, but they'll never the tell time. you. Right. They will never now, tell you. Now, do they, we would, do Oof. you, did you hug? Were you physically affectionate? Yeah. Like not super, we're not, not super. Nothing. No. Yeah. Like the, I have nothing. <laughs> yeah, I no. say, I, I say I love you to my sisters on the phone and I can tell that they, um, it's rough on them. Yeah. Mm. My mother never yeah. said it. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> my mother, the last day I was with her. Um, I always said, I love you. Uh, you must. You know, like, <laughs> mom, course, I love do. you. Uh, yeah, same. You know, like, she just couldn't do it. And the last day I was it's in with there, her, though, right? Well, I never felt unloved. Yeah. And I could tell by the way she looked at me and mm. would tell me every, and, you know, I was her confidant and I was sort of her voice in the nursing home when she, you know, right. she would call me. But the last day, um, and I said this in her eulogy, we were together. I I did her chin hairs. Yeah, I do that for my mom. Um, and uh, I kissed her, and I said, "I love you." And she said, "Not as much as I love you." Oh. And then I said, "No, I love you more." And she said, "It's not possible, Judith." <laughs> and I said, "Yes, it is. It's I love you more." And she said, "I'm not arguing with you, Judith." <laughs> and that was the. Uh, that was the last Brings thing. Her right back. And she was waiting for that moment her whole life. I, she I was just, like, this is going to be so great, though. I think she knew. I mean, I, I think she knew that was it was I can't because I'll just start crying because it was not even that long ago. But yeah. it it is such a transformative thing when you're when you're an orphan. You yeah. Know, when your mother. Yeah. You know, my father, you know, very sudden. I was 27. Boom. Mm. Yeah. Swimming heart attack. You know. Wow. And. You know, it's different with these long deaths. I can't with the long death. But, all right, we can't, we got to get over the fucking death thing now. Kill me now. But, uh, kill me yeah. now! Although, but, you know, that is one of, uh, yeah, my, my father had a very extended death because he was sick. So then, right. you, then you go through that. Uh, and, you know, there's always been this sort of, like, I kind of, I joked about it a little earlier, but it's true in my family, which is like, you're lucky once you, like, if you make it so far that right. you get to die... You did well. What is the Jewish thing? Is seventy right? If you, seventy-two, it's it's 70. yeah, it's seventy-two. I think that's seventy. Because my right? father lived till seventy-four, so it's like those are borrowed years. Uh-huh. Yeah, my mother lived till Bonus. ninety-two. Yeah, it's extra. Um, but you know what I love? People come up to me. Uh, how are you? They haven't seen me. I said, sure. oh, my, my 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 mom just passed away. Oh, that's terrible. How old was she? Ninety-two. Well, what do you expect? I'm oh, like, fuck you. I it doesn't agree. matter. Joan Rivers, one of our last conversations, she said it doesn't matter how old you, your mother is, how old you are, if she's cognizant, if she's not, if, you know, it's your mother. You know, because my mother's 86, so every single time I hear someone say something like, yeah, this person passed away, but, you know, they were 82. I'm like, shut, shut up. the fuck up. I get so angry. I know. It's, it's so, it's like awful. And yeah. then it's also like... Yeah, there are tragedies, like your friend. That's yes. an awful thing, but it doesn't... Ugh. Uh, and then I got a lot of cards, which I'm putting in my act, where they're like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear about your mother. You know, you only get one mom. I'm like, well, my kids have three, so I don't know what the <laughs> fuck you're talking about. <laughs> oh, Fira, you were on Craig Ferguson, and yes. you killed. You oh, that's very killed. Nice. No, And your jokes are fucking amazing. That's uh, they're Thank really you. well written and they're fucking hilarious. And I was on that show and I, I wouldn't say I bombed. I was okay. I never do well doing four minutes of stand up. It's impossible on a show. And but yet I can take control of a club for an hour and a half. You know, and a lot of people can do the four minutes on TV and, and that's it. And that's it. Yes, it's a very. I'm not that kind of comic if I had a special for an hour someone please then it would be fine but you your jokes are uh, I was just like she's this is perfect. That's very nice. It was weird to find all the short jokes, though, for that right. For that and reason. And then the transit. And I remember you opened Ugh. with. I remember this. You opened. You came out. Hi, I'm Ophira. You did the Oprah joke, sure, which is hilarious. Mm-hmm. And then my nephew's really into Facebook. Something yep. about Facebook. That's right. And I thought, oh my god, in her act. 
act in the club, it would never go like that. No. You, it's but it's so like they odd. make you just get right into whatever topic you're and it's so unnatural to me. Totally unnatural and I'm I'm conversational style yes. much like you. So I hate that. Like it doesn't read well right. for me. I want to sort of like, hey, we're going on a journey. Right. It's going to be a little excess fat in between because right. <laughs> this is the personality. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, um It's called charisma. Yeah, and it's just like that's the way I talk and I don't yeah. want to change. And but, I so feel that was, like that was hard sculpting that. I feel like, you know, I you know, I'll do. I've done the Tonight Show s- several times. First time yes. I was on panel because I was hot at Amazing that time. Panel, uh, and I'm great at panel. And then I had to follow John McCain <laughs> once, and I, I, I'm like, oh my god, that's so perfect for me. And then um, something else I did, uh, and you know, I've never Arsenio. I did several times, and that was great. But I was young, and I was uh, it was different. I didn't know as much, and. It's just so weird. You know, it's just weird to have, why aren't you on this show? And I want to say, I kind of don't want it. That's not how I want my stand-up. But so, all right, so you've been doing stand-up. I would love to do another late night, but it is a a, a really odd task. Yeah, and you have to work on it. And then you don't ever want to say that material again. Absolutely. You Mm. wrote a book. I did. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) So good. Which I love. It's called Screw Everyone, Sleeping My Way to Monogamy. And it's fucking great. Politics, clearly. Yes. And uh, you host a game show. I host a trivia comedy show. Yep. Trivia. uh, Okay. Game show. Game show trivia. Whatever. I know. Ask me another. Ask me another. I I love that show. It is my favorite. It is all I listen to the radio on Saturday. Eh, You're done. (laughs) So... That is so funny. It's the great. First of all, the fact that you're smart and funny is like the perfect. Oh, my God. And and beautiful. (laughs) Sorry. God, I'm coming on this all the time. Yeah. Invite it or not. Please. Uh, The I love the premise and I love I mean, I my mother was a major crossword puzzle. Oh, really? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the last day we did the New York Times crossword puzzle. And uh, I have since really got, I'm like obsessed. And Elisa's like, what are you doing? Like, she thinks I'm, t- I never, what are you doing? You checking your Twitter? I'm like, no, right, I'm doing you're on your phone. Pu- like the yeah. mini puzzle. Do you get the mini puzzle on New York Times? <gasps> they have a mini puzzle every day. And I, I try to do it in under a minute. It's Her fucking life great. is a mini puzzle. She probably so, needs a break. <laughs> okay. So I love that. Um, and you've had amazing guests on. Not, it's fun. You it's haven't fun. had Ju- Judy. I know. Gold. We should have Judy Gold know. on. I can't even get on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. I'll get in touch with her assistant. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, we, we can make that's that happen. Um, I love that. It's it's a fun gig. It was not what I mean. Who Did knew you that? pitch that? No, no. I, I auditioned. One of the only auditions that what? Uh, worked out. Yeah, I you auditioned. auditioned. I wasn't called in for that. Uh, oh, I was. God. Well, that's so funny you yeah. say that because they were like, yeah, we saw like uh, so many comics. They're like, we need a Judy Gold type. <laughs> <laughs> came I don't right think they'll the ever say we need a Judy Gold type. Um, but yeah, so. I auditioned. I mean, usually, uh, and sometimes I'm like, wow, this is one of the few auditions that panned out. Radio. All right. Well, I don't know what but that radio's says about radio's great. No, it's great. But I just think you don't like, have to wear makeup. <laughs> but now they they do all the taping, and you have to fucking wear makeup on radio because we are live, and there's photos, and there's an expectation for lots of social do media. Do you look forward to doing the show every week? I love performing live. Right. So the so fact much. that there is a live component to this, I think if it was all in studio, uh, that would that I would l- still like to do it, but it would feel very differently. It would feel like I was I would ha- a huge learning curve. Definitely. But you know, there's still a learning curve here translating live to stu- to audio. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so performing live, I mean, it's just like there's nothing better than that. I there is I am one of those people. I I I love being it, it has to be lo- like, I don't, I can't. I mean, I can't even, I get like this when I'm so overwhelmed yeah. and I can't talk, but there is nothing like live performance. Nothing, there is nothing. Nothing. I mean. We it, have 10 seconds left. No, we don't. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> when you, will you come back? Of course. Of no, course, no, I'm serious because this was. I would love uh, you're to. You're like one of my favorite people. Wait, before, I have to fucking wait. Of course she'll be back. Um, back. Listen, so, um, yeah, so being in front of an audience, there is, I there's no comparison. None. I don't. And it pays less. It pays nothing. It pays nothing. So is that is why choice. fucking I did this off Broadway play and now I'm in debt. You know, it's like, I but I love it so much. It's like this fucking sacrifice and people think you're crazy, but it's like I, I would die inside. I, it's I, why totally, I have 16 jobs. 
yeah, I, oh, all about you, Lauren. I sit there and you, you know people are like, oh, you know, what about a yeah. uh, what about a, yeah. a nice job writing for television? Or you know, there's all oh, that's what they say. Why don't you get a job? Can you imagine me sitting? And I mean, I did it for Rosie, and I loved it. But yeah. then I became the human interest producer, so that you know, I put on all the non celebs. So that was great. But just sitting there and writing in someone else's voice is so difficult. I would just, you know, I just want to go out at night, and right. then that would basically. That's what I now. When I job. was on, um, when I was on All American Girl, which was a sitcom with Margaret. Yes. Trump, every night I went out to do sets, and they were like Judy. They used to call me the Leopard. Everyone called me the Leopard because I. How many spats do you have tonight? <laughs> and even Joy and Susan, you're still going out. Like, I still go to the cellar. Every, I have to work. I, that's my job, you know? And I it, they, I would leave this TV show, which was always my dream to be on a sitcom, and I couldn't wait to get on stage and say my words and not have, like, 28-year-olds staring in the corner writing on their, you know, Absolutely. pads and whispering about how, we've got to get rid of her. We've got, you know, like, And even if it goes badly, somehow you're like, I don't know. I don't care. I, I can I, go on to more, you know? I just knew, yeah. I feel like even when it's it, when it, when it goes badly, it still sucks. Well, right. when it goes badly, you have to reset and do another one so you don't have to end Yeah, then you're that. just like, well, we'll figure it out. Right. I'll figure it out a little. It's, uh, it, you're... Yeah career is fucking incredible uh do you feel lucky i feel totally lucky i also like sometimes but you worked really hard yeah can't i just focus on one thing like why does it have to be the stand-up and this and no i do that that. but that's what but that's that's in your head that's your head that's what you do yeah so um I really want to be on the show, but then I would feel like I'm really stupid because I have no. See, as a VIP, we anyways. We'll, no, I, I. But here's the thing: I have terrible ADD, and yet I read 24 hours. You can ask Lauren if I'm do in an elevator. Do you dumb down the questions for the VIPs? What's that? Do you dumb down the questions? No, for we the VIPs? just write it based on what they They're are into. Oh, cool. Yeah. So if you can ask Lauren, uh, like literally, I I feel like I'm wasting if I'm just standing somewhere. I'm I, I have to read. I like I'm con. Yeah. yeah. And I couldn't read that much when I was a kid because I had such bad ADD, but I played the piano, so huh. I it was uh, doing something. Yeah. I read music, and I would play the piano all the time, so I was sort of reading. Uh, and I feel like I never read all the books I've wanted to. You know, like I, that's the one regret I have. Well, that's, oh my God, if you start talking about not reading all the books that, you, yeah. I mean, I have huge holes. I haven't even seen yeah. like big movies that everyone's right, like, same. <laughs> I, know I know, that. I haven't seen Silence of the Lamp. We should have a club. Perfection you know paralysis. What? When you're filling in the gaps. Filling it. Oh my. That's the brilliance. <laughs> or how about Fira? When making you're all the plans. <laughs> when you're like sitting at home with the baby wanting to kill yourself. Yeah. Which I'm told is every hour on the hour. I. What I should come? We should do that. I, I wanted to start. My friend Karen Bergen wanted to start a documentary club. Oh yeah, where we all watch a documentary and then talk yeah. about it. Yeah, that would be. Gr- that sounds great. It's going to be a lot of crying. I know, but There's I don't care. Very few documentaries. That I know. Are like, oh, and six million God. Jews were killed in the Holocaust. This one's called the, the Last Polar Bear. Wait, what about that new one about the? Uh, the uh, Nazi, uh, the Nazi officer falling in love with one of. The, yeah, the fuck is that? Yeah, there's that too. I mean, if yeah. you want to go Nazi genre, we have an entire. Oh my lifetime. god, I love the Nazi genre. <laughs> no, um, I just watched Hitler's Kids on Netflix. Oh yeah, wow. yeah, it's good. It's fantastic. Uh, I, gotta, uh, I know you have to leave, I gotta but go. um, I love you. Will you, please? Can we continue? Yes, I'll come. We'll come to you in Brooklyn. No, no, no. I can come here. It's fine. And then the last thing, because we ask everyone. No, we this. really want to come to your house. Sure, you could go. <laughs> um, I have two questions. Sure, one. Are you on? Well, you're pregnant, so you're probably not on any antidepressants. No, and I've I've only done them very rarely. I have a, a s- extreme fear of pills. There's I a know. pill for that. I have a really weird, intense <laughs> fear of pills. Dude, you I, just gave me the death look. <laughs> uh, I take so many pills because I had a clinical depression, which lasted a very long time, and I really, I remember. Most of my life, I have not taken anything. I've just worked out and, you know, and I've had suffered from terrible anxiety. So one, maybe, but I'm on a cock cocktail tail Mm -hmm. cock and I'm a lesbian (laughs) tail and it's. Yeah, I want to get off, but I'm so afraid. Yeah, I'm fearful. So you've been on what? I've I've been on. Uh, I think I, I tried Prozac. That was the early years, and um, uh, it was. Um, I, I can't remember. You're what the it, third guest on the, Nomads. 
third. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. that's it. I feel like an anomaly. Um, I think it was Zoloft. It was one of those other ones. Oh, that made ones. me puke. Yeah. Now, final question. What pisses you off the most? The most of all. Of I, everything where you want to fuck it. You can't. I mean, I, it changes all the time, sure. but I would say an overall one that really pisses me off is basically <laughs> uh, organized religion. Yes! <laughs> I hate yes. anyone. I'm so sick of people justifying their shitty actions uh, through the guise of their organized religion. Right. I know it's like, I'm not even talking like violence in the world, which is extreme. I'm talking everyday things. Right, right, right. Everyday things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the one one thing that I think religion was good about mm-hmm. that has been removed, which would be helpful, is shame. I was like, if you could have a little bit more religious shame, oh, right, of maybe course. that would be shame great. Shame is the greatest weapon in the world. But they have shame towards me. They don't shame towards themselves. No. Now, um, will you be bringing up your child Jewish? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I, but so, ish. That was funny. Ish. Ish. Yeah. Jewish ish. Yeah. No, but that's, you know, I'm a Jew and I believe spiritually in the Jewish people and the state of Israel. I Absolutely. Like, I feel I'm the not, same um, way. About I'm not Judaism. giving that up. But also, I'm like, if you think praying to God is going to change anything, right. good luck. I'm a newly identified atheist. That's great. All about you. <laughs> um, listen, Ophiria, I have something to say to you. Yes. And it is. Lauren sucks. No, please let me. This is what I'd like to say to you. It's just so sad. (laughs) You know what? I feel like uh, I'm going to pay you 150 bucks right now. That's it? Only 150? Well, that's after the insurance. Oh, that's the. uh, What's the total? I guess it's 220 or something like that. Yeah, mine's 220. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's down. I'm giving you a break. Right, yeah, exactly. You know, because you get to come during the day. Couples, 350. Couples. We should have couples. (laughs) <laughs> My friend Judy Toll went to couples with her writing partner. With her workmate. Yeah, oh, makes sense. Um, Ophira. Yes, Judy. I Judith. adore you. I adore you. Um, so, I was very pleased we made this happen. I'm so sorry about, and I am coming to babysit, and we'll watch, let's watch something we have. Let's, let's, uh, yeah, oh my God. Like, like something from the 70s where everyone's like, can you see this? I, I haven't fuck. seen, I mean, I know. Hitchcock film. I, I know, all right. We're doing Hitchcock. Yep. I have seen the, a the bunch. The baby but, loves Hitchcock. Um, well, have you ever have you seen um, Rear Window? Maybe that's where I'll. Have be. you seen Goodbye Columbus? Nope. Okay, that's my addition, and then you have to give me one. All right. Well, uh, that will be North by Northwest. Yeah, we'll see North by Northwest. That's a great. Okay. One. All right. All right. Good. I love you. Love Thank you. you. Ophira and Eisenberg. It's so sad. Oh, yes. Com. Uh, bangs is her. Amazing album. I have a copy and I've listened to it with my wife. Screw Everyone is her book. Ask I, Me Another. Is on NPR. On, on NPR s- and on iTunes. But it's Screw Everyone. Oh, S- Sleeping sorry. My Way to Monogamy. Sleeping yeah. My right. Way to Monogamy. Yeah. That's the, the important boat. tagline. Sleeping you're right, you're right, where you're right. can they get that? Amazon. Amazon. That's what I was called my whole life. Yeah. yeah. Bookstores, maybe. And, uh, the three that are left. you can find yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Host of the Moth. Do you have any shows coming up or anything? You're just like, are you hosting the Moth? Well, you well, host I, the Moth every at the bookstore, right? Yeah, I host I used some to, of their live I shows. I used to host them and do them, and now they haven't called me in a couple of years. Oh, you should have sent them a line. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Just send them a note. I'll get in touch really? with Really? Yeah. I would love, I have. Yeah, they, they just, you know, they're, they would love to, I'm sure if you were like, hey, Because I loved it, mm-hmm. and I want to do Mother Dying. Any plugs, Ophira? Um, Other than any, I, like, on October eighth, I'm going to attempt to do a uh, little stand-up show talking about being pregnant while very, very pregnant. Nice. Uh-huh. Called, um, I think I'm calling it Inside Joke. <laughs> oh, I like that. I so love brilliant. it. You're I brilliant. Love it. <laughs> um, and you know what? That is so sad. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm so glad I told also, you. Also, katg.com slash tour if you want to find out where oh, I'll God. be in October. I'm just putting it out there. I'll have some Kill Me Now swag hopefully by then. There yes. Uh, I, what's my story? Judy Gold. I? I'm in Provincetown. Oh. I will be in Provincetown oh. Labor Day weekend at the Fart House. Yep. It's yep. called the Odd House. Yeah. The Odd House. I'm going to Cleveland in September. September for some gay pride thing and Toronto and I'll be in Toronto at a theater that I have to look up the name in of October. Jew 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 doing 25 questions for Jews I, oh my god you're gonna be so pregnant I wish you could come I wish I could come too um, to can we do out. something together oh my god yes. how great would that be okay no I'm not kidding Judy okay. and Ophira should right. be friends and are friends and now I love you I'm sending you some pitches 
All right. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, thank you. Thank you. It's very sad, but I love you. <laughs> it's very, very sad. This has been one of my favorite episodes of Kill Me Now. Me too. Uh, amazing. I wish we could go on and on, but I Me fucked too. up. I mean, Lauren fucked up. And uh, everything was wonderful. I'll see you soon. Thank you for the visit. So long. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. You chose to hit play on this podcast today. Smart choice. Make another smart choice with AutoQuote Explorer to compare rates from multiple car insurance companies all at once. Try it at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy.